morning. Um, we're ready to start our Sabbath School lesson study, and I have the privilege of being here with Gonzalo Pita, member of the Tridelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church, and we are about to embark in studying by Scripture alone, sola scriptura. And mm -hmm. before we start our study, we would like to invite you um, to pray with us, to invite the Holy Spirit to guide our study. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to study your word. We thank you again for the privilege of being able to open a Bible and study it, something many people in the past were not able to do. But today we have that privilege. Help us to take advantage of this opportunity and to um, learn from you as you share with us through your word. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So, Gonzalo, an interesting yeah. study this week. Very interesting, very uh, challenging as well. Okay. Uh, and, but we are, as, as you say, we are happy to be here discussing the Sabbath school and just to mention that we miss our brothers and sisters a lot. Yeah, and we, we, are, we hope that this finishes soon so we can meet again here in the church. That's right. Yes. So, yes. tell me a little bit about maybe the context of this phrase, sola mm. scriptura, this, is this a, a phrase that came out in the 1920s or 1930s yeah. or now in the year 2000 or does it go back some time? It goes back. Okay. Uh, interestingly, uh, we, when we think about the sola scriptura, which means the Bible alone uh, or only the Bible, uh, we think about Martin Luther and the Diet of Worms uh, there in Germany. So, uh, and, the, and the discussion at Leipzig with Johannes Eck. The, so he, um, he appealed to the Bible as the sole role, the rule of authority and the, the basis for, for all belief. Now, interestingly enough, I, I tried to find way, who was the first who wrote Sola Scriptura. It's a, it, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a formula from the Renaissance, very compact Latin, very elegant Latin. So, uh, it, some people say it was Karlstadt, uh, an associate of Luther, but it comes from before as well. Okay. That's the interesting yeah. thing. So maybe we can read something if, if that's fine. Sure. Um, you may be thinking, well, that some people before uh, had the, 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 the principle of sola scriptura, using only the Bible only in order to build the theological uh, building of doctrine and practice. And let me find here, there is an article in the Journal of the Adventist Theological Society which has a lot of qu uh, quotations from the Waldensians. Okay. Yes, and it's free online, you can go and, and see, I should have... Um, one second, I'm trying to find, it's... Uh, I should have... Uh, one second. Well, unfortunately, you can find it, but maybe we'll find it in a second. Uh, this is a new, uh, so I, I, I didn't, yeah. Um, okay, it's not. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, it, um, I can't find it, but they said in the year 1200 or even before, the inquisitors found that they refused to accept the, uh, the authority from the fathers of the church or any other uh, thinkers by any chance, and they thought that anything that doesn't conform to the Bible, to the New Testament, they considered it a fable. Mm. And of course, that didn't make them very uh, popular with inquisitors. So they interestingly, they, they had this uh, idea saying they, they would compare everything to the Bible, and if it was not according to the Bible, they would just discard anything else. So it was a, it was a Waldensian uh, principle for sure, okay. centuries before Martin Luther. Okay, so, so the church and church members, we mm -hmm. can say, the, the, the Christians, were facing a, a big dilemma. Um, follow the Bible or follow tradition. Right. But they, didn't, they understood that you couldn't do both at the same time. Either one or the other was the authority. And the Valdenses and others later on um, decided the Bible and the Bible alone right. should be our guide. And, and so interesting that we today um, reap the benefits of, of being able to go back to the scriptures to make it the foundation 
of our system of beliefs. Right. Yes? Mm -hmm. now, that's a good thing. Interesting. So, so um, maybe in this same context, as, as we look at the Bible, um, there are different ways of interpreting the Bible, yes? Mm -hmm. And, and s some look at it as, a, as an allegory, yes? They, they, they look at it um, from a different, maybe, lens, from a different perspective. Um, but the Bible invites us to take it as, as a real um, stories, real message from God that we should then also personalize. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, this principle of sola scriptura is not just something, um, it's not just something that um, affects the church, but it also affects us as persons. Mm -hmm. Yes? Exactly. Okay. That's right. So we can probably, what do you think, we can talk about like two different dimensions or levels where the sola scriptura principle works on, on the individual level, us as, as our source of, of course, of belief and practice, but also on the level of the church, which, sp which spans time and also spans the whole church throughout the ages, basically. And in essence, is the plan of salvation, the great controversy as well. Okay. It operates on both. So when Martin Luther was probably talking about the sola scriptura principle, he was not just referring to him as an individual only, but he was also uh, referring to the formative F effect of the sola scriptura on the whole church of all ages, all ages. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and maybe um, looking at the Bible as the ruling norm, um, which is Sunday's section, right? Um, do we find in the Bible evidence that we should take the Bible and the Bible alone as our guide, as this lamp unto our feet, yes? Mm -hmm and a light unto our path. Do we find in scriptures also this idea that we should look at the Bible as the one source of revelation of what God would like each one of us to do, mm -hmm. and also what he would like his church, his people to do? Right. Yes? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the uh, um, an interesting also point is that we may think we may see the foundations of the Sola Scriptura principle as part of, of course, the Bible, but it points to a reality, right? Mm -hmm. The reality of, the, uh, of God wanting to save humanity through the church. So it, in a sense, it's, it's related to the history of God, to God's reality, okay. uh, the Sola Scriptura and be beyond. And the other thing is that the, the center of the Old Testament and the center of the New Testament is Jesus Amen. in the heavenly sanctuary. Yes. Therefore, the Sola Scriptura, I think, refers to a, a reality which involves the heavenly sanctuary, the work of Jesus and the great controversy to save us. And uh, so it's, it's part of a large uh, conglomerate of, of meaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a passage here in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 6. And, and there's a, a situation that Paul um, was facing in his time. Um, some wanted to side with, with him, others wanted to side with Apollos, and, and they were, you know, creating this controversy. Who was the one who was saying the right thing? And I think, um, again, what, what we see Paul doing is pointing back to the scriptures, yes? Mm -hmm. Right. And of course, the scriptures for Paul and for many of the disciples was um, the Old Testament. That was the scriptures of his time. And I just, I just want to read um, maybe um, verses 4 through 6. We won't do 1 through 6, but just 4 through 6. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written, mm -hmm. that none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. And so here Paul inviting again um, 
the early church. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the scriptures. Yes, let God reveal to us what is right. right. Let God tell us what is the way that we should go. Mm -hmm. And let's not um, judge who is the better one or who is the least. God will one day reveal that as well. Mm -hmm. But um, for now, let's go back to the scriptures. And I think that's an important principle. It is. As we continue to understand a little bit more of God's plan of salvation, as you mentioned, Christ being the center of the scriptures and the sanctuary, the plan of salvation as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, does this exclude, Gonzalo, um, other maybe um, areas of study? Should, should Because we take the Bible and the Bible alone as our ruling norm, does that mean, you know, we should discard whatever science says, or we should not pay attention to other fields of, of, um, of knowledge um, because we're only going to follow the Bible? Right. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't um, exclude all the other sciences uh, by, by any chance. I mean, the, several of the most important d discoveries in science have been done by Christians and by, by, by the Jewish nation as well. Therefore, uh, science, is, is, it doesn't replace. It's different. It is different, I think. It's a different uh, sphere, mm -hmm. for sure. We can use uh, also the, what, what new knowledge we get from uh, linguistics, archaeology, history, in order to better understand what was the stage where these things were written in the Bible. So we should use all the tools for sure. The, the tool doesn't replace the subject matter for sure. Okay, so, yeah. so this, this means that um, we, we should find ways of, of maybe um, harmonizing whatever we might be studying with the scriptures. Yes, right. that, that would be one point. And maybe something that um, for those of us who are studying the Bible, like you, um, there are fields that are not necessarily um, in scripture, but that help us understand the scriptures. Um, the knowledge of languages is a field that can help us understand the scriptures. Um, the knowledge of the geography of, of the place where this took place can help us as well. Um, I, I, I know that Israel is very much like California. Hmm. On the west side of, of the state of California, there's an ocean. On the west side of the country of Israel, there is an ocean. Hmm. Um, there's also right. mountains that go up fairly quickly once um, you come to the coast. The same in Israel. And then you have a desert. And in Israel, you also have a desert. So this helps us understand a little bit as to why um, the disciples would walk in a certain way as they went up to Galilee or as they went up to Jerusalem, as it's mentioned in the New Testament. And, and it helps us understand, again, um, maybe some of the things that they also did as, as, as a people when it came to food and, mm. and clothing and why they would do certain things because of the climate that right. that region had. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Exactly. I mean, we should take advantage of, uh, of all the auxiliary sciences in order to inform our reading and our understanding for sure. Now... In regards to the ruling norm, I think on um, Sunday, yes. we are, I don't know if we, if we are still on Sunday. We are still, on Sunday. We are still there, right. Good. So it presupposes certain things, unstated things. I mean, in order to become a rule for something, we, th there is something before the Sola Scriptura or the Scripture itself. So the question is, uh, did the Word of God or, God or Scripture produce the church, mm -hmm. created the church, or the church created or produced scripture. I mean, there is a, a fundamental difference in there that. Is. And uh, in, if we say sola scriptura, we are saying that the Bible or the word of God has produced, I don't know what's the word, or created the church and not the opposite. It's not just the product of changing ideologies or changing cultures, uh, even though it spans, what, 2,000 plus mm -hmm. years, but it's not the product of the changing uh, circumstances of the age, but quite the opposite. I mean, the Lord raised Israel, the Lord raised the remnant church as well. Mm -hmm. That understanding, I think, uh, is related to the value of Sola Scriptura as well. What do you think? I, I think you, you make a very important point because today many people will say that the Bible is the product of the church. 
and specifically the the church of the middle ages they mm. say they are the ones who basically brought into existence um this 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 book that we read today um and and we can go back to the middle ages and and know the bible goes beyond it goes back to the time of jesus and it goes even back before the time of jesus and what we see is that the nation of israel um early christians when they read the scriptures and they understood the god that is presented in the scriptures a god of love a god who is all powerful and all knowledgeable um it produced a change and 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 yes the the, the what happened was in many ways revolutionary yes it, it shifted um not just um relationships among people but also it 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 it, it put people to think mm -hmm. and it produced the sciences and and mm -hmm. you see that um especially in the reformation how people when they went back to the scriptures all of a sudden um they were open to seeing <laughs> and studying nature too because it revealed who god was and 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 you just see so many things so, so many positive things happening exactly for sure and now that you mentioned the uh the the word revolutionary yeah. it brought to my mind something that i was reading of a, a profound jewish scholar from the 1800s he was he said that uh, revolutions produce changes in in the law and the legal systems of a country and the, the social structure so there are changes when there are tensions into the normative uh, records of a nation and the practice, then the revolutions bring the law to the new, uh, to the current situation of a country. But he said, but in the Bible, we, in the Bible, we just find the opposite. No revolutionary, if we can call them that way, changes the Bible, but rather brings, tries to bring the prophet, the state of society at the time or the church back to the Bible that is also sola scriptura amen so a revolutionary is not necessarily a revolutionary doesn't change the law but brings the law to a higher position in the in the in the history of the bible as well so times bring us new understanding but new understanding doesn't doesn't replace the authority of the bible that seems to be one of the core uh, meanings of the sola scriptura mm -hmm. principle Right. And, and that, that is true, um, where, where the Bible is not negated. In fact, what happens is um, we go back to a better understanding of God's plan. And that produces change and that produces positive change. And, and, and that's something that we can then share with others so that they can also um, reap the benefits or the blessings that God has for each one of us. Right. Um, there's a text in Acts chapter 17, verse 10 and 11. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to open it to Acts chapter 17, verse 10 and 11. And this is a, a passage that we know well. This is a, a, a group of Christians, the Bereans, mm -hmm. and we've heard of uh, they're famous in, in Scripture. Um, and the reason why they're famous is it's mentioned here in verse 10. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Mm -hmm. And so again, um, the idea is because Paul or Silas were saying it, wasn't enough for these Christians to say, okay, I'll accept it. They said, let's go to the scriptures. Let's right. see if this is based on the word of God. And if it was, they accepted it. Exactly. So it was the only source, authoritative source of that information. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I would assume that they went back to the Bible, they, they went to the Bible and read if what Paul and Silas were preaching was according to the plan and the mission that the Lord had given Israel in the past. There is, a, there is a connection, I think, that's what, there is a connection between the past, the prophets, the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles, uh, to today, right? There is. There is a continuity, mm -hmm. and the Sola Scriptura is at the core, so that's why we were saying, maybe the, the, the Bible says that it creates, creates the people of God. It, the mm -hmm. Word of God sustains and gives mission, purpose, direction. To the word of uh, to to the people of God. Amen. I, I not like the other idea. way around. And yeah. not the other way around. 
um, when we go to the scriptures, Gonzalo, going mm. to Monday's lesson, okay, yes. um, we, we find um, that this these books are not independent from each other. Right. Yes, they're, they're not going in different directions. Um, they don't necessarily, they, they don't give <clears throat> option A, B, C, D, and you choose what right. you want. It tells us this is God's will. And from Genesis all the way until the book of Revelation, um, God's will is revealed to us in a very coherent, mm -hmm. yes, and cohesive way. Right. And, and maybe you can share a little bit about um, <clears throat> this part here. Why is this unity so important as we look at the Bible and as we study it? Ah, that's a good, qu difficult question. Uh, um, we assume that the Lord has a purpose. It's a loving character, a loving purpose of finding us and saving us. Therefore, if we say that the Bible is not, doesn't have unity, where it's contradictory, is not clear, in a sense, we, are, we, we get in tension with uh, many of the, uh, of the uh, statements of the Bible itself and the God's character. Therefore, the Bible itself says there is uh, coherent, co there, it has a unity. Um, and that is an important thing. So I like, there are certain uh, quotations from Ellen White which talk about a harmonious system of truth. Okay. Let me read it if sure. I find it. Um, Okay, I'm, I'm having trouble finding things today. <laughs> it's all right, it's there. I know um, it's there. Here, yes. So, Ellen White in, uh, in The Great Controversy says, the subject of the sanctuary was the key which unlocked the mystery of the disappointment in 1844. Mm -hmm. It opened to view a complete system of truth mm. connected and harmonious Amen. showing that God's hand had directed the great Advent movement and revealing present duty mm. as it brought to light the, uh, the position and work of his people and, and then the correct understanding of the ministration of in the heavenly sanctuary is the foundation of our faith. Amen. Amen. Powerful. So that's why the, the reason there are no contradictions, there, there, there are no uh, hesitancies uh, in God's plan. Therefore, mm -hmm. the Bible is a coherent, complete system of truth. It's challenging, right? It is. For many people, even for, for, for us sometimes. But at the same time, I, I think it reveals something so important um, to us, especially that we live in these days. Um, there is a message that was given by the prophets, a mm -hmm. message that was given by Jesus and the disciples that fits um, clearly. It's, it's part and needs each other in order to be understood. Right. And as we read both the Old and the New Testament, we have a better understanding of God's plan yeah. of salvation. And that was something our pioneers discovered again because they were searching the scriptures and the book of Revelation tells us clearly this was an experience they would have to go through yes right, they right. would eat this little book the book of daniel yeah and it would be sweet to their 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 taste buds but once it got to the stomach it would become bitter and and they would go through a terrible disappointment mm -hmm. but again they would be called to prophesy Right. To give a message, a clear message that is presented all the way from the book of Genesis all the way until the book of Revelation. And, and I think that is something that as we study the scriptures, it's important not just maybe to pick a section or a verse and build a theology of who God is. But it's important that we take into consideration the entire scriptures and based on the entire scriptures, then share a message of who God is. Exactly. And now that you mentioned the, 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 the great disappointment of yeah. 1844, uh, after the Jesus crucifixion, that was another great disappointment. Correct. When Israel was uh, sent to Babylon was another great disappointment. Yes. So there were many disappointments in, in sacred history, mm -hmm. if we, we can call it that way. But after that, people came back to the Bible. That's where they went. And, and the Lord gave a, a better understanding of 
the real implications of the Bible. And that, I think, applies also on the personal level. We may go sometimes through difficult uh, or disappointments in things related to the Bible, but if we come back to the Bible, then we will get a better understanding. We will be more open. And, and I like that. Um, the disciples were, were an example of that. You know, they were walking to Emmaus, yes? Yeah. And, and Jesus comes along them and, and, and Emmaus, on the road to Emmaus, and, and tells them about, you know, the plan of salvation, starting with Moses right. and, and continued on. And, and so they were searching the scriptures to understand what happened. Why did Jesus die? And going back to the scriptures, they understood this was God's plan mm -hmm. and it made sense. And I think this is an important point because many people today will tell us and might, might tell you, um, and maybe even family members will tell you, um, the Bible is a difficult book and it's hard to understand and it's not very clear. And maybe because it's written so many years ago, I mean, you're talking here of, of thousands of years ago that the Bible was written. You know, how can we today understand this book? And maybe the question, um, Gonzalo, is, is the Bible clear? Can we understand it as we read it, as we pray, as we ask the Holy Spirit to help us? Will our understanding um, today be clear um, than maybe yesterday or the day before yesterday? Well, I think that that is the promise, right? But it doesn't come at a low price okay. in the sense that the Bible itself and, um, and Ellen White many times say that there is a treasure there. There is a treasure of knowledge of good news that we need to work hard to get. It's not righteousness by works, but mm -hmm. if we want to understand the thoughts of the Lord, then we need to work hard. Mm -hmm. We need to study. We need to have discipline. We have to, to dig deeper and deeper in the Bible. We have to study with our brothers and sisters in Sabbath school and share our understanding of the Bible. But the promise is that it's clear it's, and we can understand it. So is this something a child can understand? Is this something that um, a person who, who, you know, works hard you know, Monday through Friday, um, is this something someone like my grandfather who only went to school up to, I think it was fifth grade elementary school, that was all he did in schooling. Um, is the Bible a book that he could understand and, and read and, and, and benefit from it? Yes. Or is it something only scholars can understand or theologians can understand? Well, the now that you mentioned the beautiful thing is when I present, when uh, Belen and I would teach the lessons to Matthias and Vicky, mm -hmm. they understand many things okay. to their level. But what is the outcome? They come to appreciate deeper and deeper the character of God. Okay. They may be, they're not understanding all the, the, all the details of the Bible, neither I understand all the, uh, mm -hmm. but they understand enough to grasp, to, to thank the Lord for their w love and, 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 and work for us, right? So they, they certainly can understand for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, so and, and trying to understand the scriptures, what we need is a little bit of patience maybe, and, and perseverance, yeah. not give up. And if there are parts that are difficult, um, we can always um, ask God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. And in, in helping us to understand. And, and of course, we want to see this same message in the Old Testament. We want to see it again in the New Testament. We want to see it again as Adventists in the spirit of prophecy, too. Yes. And we'll be talking about the spirit of prophecy and and um, in a second, yeah. in a second. Yes. yes. But um, there's another principle that we find in, in Wednesday's lesson. Mm. Scripture interprets Scripture. Yes. And, and what, what does that mean? It's very deep, I think. Huh? Right? We, we mentioned something last week. So the Bible not only presents us the plan of salvation and the efforts and the purposes of the Lord to save us, but also give us the rules to interpret itself. Okay. So it's a, uh, something deep. And, and you mentioned before about the, the, the Adventist pioneers. Mm -hmm. I think that they, their tremendous contribution, mm -hmm. or the Lord blessed them in order to study even the principles to understand the Bible mm -hmm. from the Bible. So that's the Sola Scriptura at its best, probably. Mm -hmm. Not just the contents, mm -hmm. but also the rules to interpret the Bible mm -hmm. itself. Therefore, they got rid of certain presuppositions that will be studied next week. What are the presuppositions? What are those mental 
theories that we come to the Bible and try to fit all the pa the facts and knowledge to those existing patterns. Uh, is that pattern approved by the Lord mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's how you think it's to start. So, so the idea that that as we read the scriptures and we find that it's a unit, um, the scriptures also also reveal to us its meaning. Yes, especially when it comes to who God is and what is His plan for each one of us. Mm -hmm. um, we can study this. You could we could say systematically, mm -hmm. um, and and look at what God reveals to us um, in, a, in, a, in, in plain words, yes, right. in, in, in a clear message. Um, and this, this does take time, but it's important that we look at the Bible. And I think something that this section also underlines is the idea of context. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can be talking about anything, and, and if it's taken out of context, people might misunderstand us, yes? They, they right. might know, well, what are you guys talking about? And so, um, I think, again, as we look at Scripture, um, to look at its historical context, it's important, look at its literary context, mm -hmm. um, look at also um, maybe its cultural um, context, because some things might be a little different for us that we live right. in, in, in so many years after it was written. And so we might find it hard to understand, but the scriptures for the most part will, will tell us a little bit more as to how we can understand the message that God was sharing to his people mm -hmm. through his prophets. And, exactly. and I think that's, that's beautiful yes, that today is. we can also benefit from that message. Exactly. For sure. And we, we don't sign contracts today uh, using our shoes, right? That's like giving right. a shoe that's to right. a, I say, buy a house. That's it doesn't right. work that way. Okay. But the principles mm -hmm. behind that are extremely profound and they have influenced our legal codes today. Therefore, uh, it's, the Bible is, is, informs us our practice as well. Now, I, I was reading something interesting um, about how is it that the Bible interprets itself. The mm -hmm. Sola Scriptura involves not just the concepts but also the principles. Uh -huh. And also Ellen White says, uh, but this is written by Professor uh, Canale. Okay. So we can share this. It says, uh, he says, the formal condition of the macro hermeneutical principles necessary to interpret scripture. So the early pioneers used scripture to interpret the macro hermeneutical principles necessary to understand scripture. Mm -hmm. Ellen White identified as foundational to Adventist doctrine, the sanctuary, mm -hmm. the law of God, mm -hmm the Sabbath, the non-immortality of the soul, mm -hmm. and the three angels' messages. Amen. So those are like pillars yes. that we will help us to un interpret or uh, have helped the church to interpret Scripture in history. Even the Waldensians, they also had an idea about what, uh, uh, you know, the, the role of, of Scripture, the, ro the, the idea of the great controversy, the, okay. like in the arrow of time uh -huh. in the plan of salvation. Mm -hmm. They even interpreted Daniel to some extent. Therefore, um, that's an important thing of the pioneers. Certain developments happened in the 50s, 60s. I don't know is, if it is part of our lesson, but it's important to keep the principles and the Bible uh -huh. strong in our church, right? It is, and, and, and I'm glad you, you mentioned also Spirit of Prophecy because there's a quote here. I think it's important that we share this quote. The Bible is its own expositor. Scripture is to be compared with Scripture. The student should learn to view the word as a whole. Mm -hmm. That's important. Right. And to see the relation of its parts. He should gain a knowledge of its grand central theme. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of God's original purpose for the world. Of the rise of the great controversy. That's a theme that we see it from the beginning with, yes. with Adam and Eve. Um, and all the way through the book of Revelation, where we see a big battle going on in heaven and continuing on here on planet Earth. And of the work of redemption. And this is found in book Education, page 190. And, and yes, it relates to what you shared. Exactly. These Very themes that, that go through the entire scriptures. Right. And that from those themes, we can then um, learn other aspects of, of God's plan for us, God's purpose for us, and also who God is, which is something I think we all want to understand. Mm -hmm. 
We have a little bit of time, Gonzalo. What should we do? Well, we should probably jump. Uh, well, we, we can go to Thursday and ask okay. about what is the relationship between the Sala Scriptura principle and Ellen White. Okay, that's a great question. That was one of my first question, what question when I became an Adventist. Okay. How do you reconcile those two things? Yes, right? it's important. And especially based on Isaiah 820, which is mm -hmm. a text that, you know, to the law and to the testimony. Yes, right. If they don't speak according to this, there is no light. Right. So what do we Adventists um, understand is the role of the spirit of prophecy in our time, mm -hmm. especially as it compares to the Bible. Right. Does Sister White, in her writings, does she share any detail about how we should um, understand the scriptures? Did she have a high view of scriptures? And, and totally those, high. It's very high. Very high, high view yes. of scripture. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. She doesn't replace her writings. Doesn't re don't replace the Bible for sure. So she points us to scriptures points always, us right? To scripture for sure. That's she she says, role. "Let's go to the scriptures. Let's find um, the foundation or the evidence for our beliefs in the scriptures." Yes. Mm -hmm. And All and I think that's 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 an important, I would say, principle also, um, that she shares with us um, in regards to her own writings and also the holy scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, uh, we have read for sure about the uh, minor light mm -hmm. that leads to the major light, yes. right? Now, that, does me that means that is a, a of less quality inspiration? Mm. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. it's, not now, no le it's, it's not less important for that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that there is another dimension too, which helps us to, to understand Ellen White's role. Okay. We f believe in the Bible. We ha we held the sola scriptura principle high, mm -hmm. and and uh, Joel said uh, the prophet Joel that there would be prophets in the last days. Therefore, Ellen White well fits uh, the the what is predicted in the Bible. Therefore, she has a role. She was raised by the Lord, and she had a very Amen. important role to play mm -hmm. in the establishment of the uh, Adventist Church after mm -hmm. the Great Disappointment. If you study the Great Disappointment history, it's no nothing short of a miracle mm -hmm. that a church, as a ch as the Adventist Church, could raise from such uh, contradictory groups and ideas mm -hmm. and turmoil in the United States back in the day, mm -hmm. before the Civil War. Uh, but Ellen White had a tremendous role to play, and we can see the hand of the Lord mm -hmm. using her to establish, to give direction to of the of the uh, to the Adventist Church. Therefore, she is, uh, in my opinion, she is, she, she points us to the Bible. Amen. But if we don't accept that, we are not accepting the Sola Scriptura principle because of the role that she played as well. And I think something that Sister White does, and for me personally, again, mm -hmm. this we, we talked about, you know, what it does for the church as, a, as an organization. But what does, you know, her writings do for us personally? Um, I found also clarity as to the mission of the Adventist church. She's very clear as to, you know, what our schools should be doing. And she's very clear about what our churches should be doing. She's very clear about what our hospitals should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, we don't always listen. Yes, just like the people of Israel, yes. we're not always listening to, to the messengers that God would send. Um, we, we don't always listen. Um, but I find in, in her writings, again, uh, 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 a sense of purpose, a sense of mission, a sense of Jesus is coming again. Let's be ready. And, and in an invitation, I would say, as it's mentioned here on Thursday's lesson, um, where she says, you know, if you had made God's word your study with a desire to reach the Bible standard and attain to Christian perfection, you would not have needed the testimony. It is because you have neglected to acquaint yourself with God's inspired book that he has sought to reach you by simple, direct testimonies. And, mm -hmm. and it's true. I mean, God from the beginning has been speaking to his people, speaking to his people. But from time, he's had to bring others along to remind um, God's people what he has said in the past. And, and she does an excellent job in, again, um, showing us these these precious gems that we can find in scripture and, and, and putting it in a very simple language 
so that anyone can understand. Yeah, for sure. I, I remember when I, when I was becoming an Adventist, I had those reservations, I would say. But, um, but the, the first moment that I opened, I remember it was uh, messages to young people, and then the great controversy, all those reservations, like, they disappeared. I mean, if you read, it's no secret, if you read her writings, uh, it's, it points con constantly to the authority, to the, uh, to the Bible, and also that sense of purpose. And she, she accomplished uh, her role in the Adventist history. So it's, it's, a serve, it's a messenger of the Lord. What's your favorite book? From Great Controversy. Writing. Great Controversy. Okay, that's a book that many, many um, have read and, and, and it's impacted their life and changed it for the better. And so. And what is your favorite book? I love Steps to Christ oh, yeah, and yeah. Christ's Object Lessons too. Oh, those it's are the, I it's love difficult it. to choose. Yes. For sure. But beautiful books. Um, we're almost out of time. We'll, we'll go for maybe one more minute. Um, any last um, thoughts here, closing thoughts um, about our lesson that you would like to share with everyone who is watching and, and also maybe for us as well as we um, continue our study? Right. Well, I think that the, um, we have a treasure in the Bible, in the Adventist history, in the Adventist mission, uh, and in the writing of the spirit of prophecy. We should... Uh, absorb those treasures. Uh, we are uh, th there is this problem, I think, of pl pluralism. Okay. That if we are with between these bounds, we can interpret the Bible in whatever way we want. But it seems that the, the Bible doesn't doesn't approve that mm -hmm. way of tackling or, or approaching the Bible. So I think we should spend the time, not just the time, but our own uh, life, mm -hmm. in better knowing what the Bible says. The sola scriptura uh, gives us a protection against many other sources of, of information which are not relevant to salvation and to mission of the church. That's, hey, that's, mm -hmm. that's a great thought. And, and maybe for me, what I take again is as I approach the scriptures, I want to approach the scriptures as a learner. I, I want to not maybe bring my own ideas into the text and try to find proof for what I want, but I, I truly want to ask God to show me what is it that he wants to tell me every time I open his word. Gonzalo, why don't you um, conclude our lesson study with a word of prayer? Sure. And, and we'll continue on then with uh, another section. I believe Elder um, Ted Wilson will be sharing uh, a, a message for us today. Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the privilege of spending this moment uh, thinking about the Sola Scriptura principle and also thinking about everything that has been done since the time of... Uh, early times of the Bible to today. And I pray, Lord, that we uh, can learn more from this uh, wonderful book that you keep transforming our lives, mm -hmm. that you bless the church around the world, and, uh, and that you keep transforming us to be more and more like Jesus so that we can accomplish our mission. And we also want to learn more from you. We want to appreciate more what you are doing in the heavenly sanctuary before coming back in order to share this wonderful news with all all those who are looking and, and searching and want uh, and have these questions. I pray, Lord, that you bless Philadelphia, that you bless the church around the world. And thank you for this beautiful day, Sabbath. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.